Mac, my dog, my border collie, he demands being walked every morning. It's the same walk. This hill is a pimple in the middle of the landscape, but somehow it's a prominent viewpoint. And it just gives me the opportunity to get a sense of what is going on. I will not bother looking at the weather reports because I can actually see it right on my doorstep. Long distant views to the west and, and the activity in the sky. And then you can see the distant mountains and the distant hills where, where I am. We're at a place not far away from where I live. So you just got 360 degree views all the way around. So when I see, for example, a real good bit of light coming in or a storm front coming in, I can, I can quickly dive up here and, and just, just go for it in terms of sketching or drawing or painting and, and that sort of thing. When I go out to a location, one of the ways I'll investigate it initially is through my camera. And it's not actually to take photos, it's to use the viewfinder on the camera. Because I deal with such big expanse of space, it almost condenses it to focus in on what is it that's drawing my interest about it. I was for a number of years an off-road driving instructor and this was based in a beautiful location in Dunkeld, which is within Perthshire. I think my, my creative inner eye was always looking out what was happening in the landscape. You also developed a sensitivity to the different types of terrain and reading the ground because you had to do that because you had to ask yourself where you're going to take the car and, and is it safe enough ultimately. When I moved from instruction to office based, I think I felt a disconnection. Being outside has always been a massive key thing for me ever since I was little really and as an adult I, that's something that I find elemental. I would end up going into work early so that I could sketch and draw the location in Dunkeld and then also it extended further so I ended up going outside in my breaks and then even further I would end up going outside and sketching and drawing after work. And, uh, it got to the stage whereby my art life just really was overtaking. Connecting up my abilities to be creative and to work in the landscape in this way is, is heaven for me, really. This area is called Mullen Moor and I've been here a couple of times. Um, and I intend to come back just a bit more extensively simply because there's just it offers a whole host of different types of terrain. So I'm just doing some uh, quick monochrome studies. It's actually more for information. It's kind of, it sort of forms part of my evidence. So I've just put in little uh, vertical lines for the distant wind farm that I can see. So I just want to capture some of the lines and sometimes what I'll do is I'll just use a, a twig in the location. It could be a feather or something along those lines and I'll take them back home. It's just another way of um, bringing in the terrain that's around me into the, the painting. is my granny's tool role. She was an artist and uh, when she passed away a few years ago, now a good few years ago now, I, I actually got all her art kit. So this, this tool role is older than me. I've got my sketchbook and I'll start with that rather than going straight into a big painting. What I'm doing is when I'm sketching a drawing, I'm not actually doing necessarily a, a bang on representation. That's not what it's about. It's actually more my intuitive response to what I see. So I, I may be inspired by the dynamic marks on the landscape or the actual movement of the clouds. Sometimes I'll write how I, how I feel at that moment in time, whether it's calm or whether it's energized or whether my mood is, is matching the mood of what's going on in and around me, I suppose. 
and then also sound. I write down the sound, so we've got the sound of the trees making this kind of shushing, gentle noise, which is almost uh, soporific. I've developed this thing of starting the paintings, doing quite a lot of the work outside and then finishing them off in the studio. Today it's fast moving. So I think in my response to that is my actions are also quite fast moving. It, it's almost like an urgency and excitement trying to get down the drama that's going on in front of me. I want to get it onto the page quickly before it changes to the next scene. But sometimes when that happens, I just have to calm myself down and acknowledge that things are going to move literally in a matter of 30 seconds. So my, the ratio of studio time to outdoor time, it's, it's um, probably about, I don't know, 50-50 maybe? And it's only when I've, I've put the work on the wall, I've, I've done this reflective time of all the evidence I've gathered through sketches, note taking, maybe a few photos, of just a few monochromatic drawings. I can kind of see things with a fresh pair of eyes and I then feel that I can move on to developing the work further into, into studio paintings. I'll work on the paintings that I've done outside because they are of the landscape. They've been there. If it's rained, then that is imbued into the surface of the painting. And then what I'll do is I will also go on to doing paintings that are purely studio based and I'll work in acrylic and oil. So it's very much heavier media. And the reason for that is uh, it's just because I've been so absorbed with, with the experience of, of the location, of the space, the sights, the sounds, etc. And I just feel the need to release that in quite an energetic way here. Using different media like that is about the alchemy of materials and the way they interact with each other as well. Whilst there's a definite split, I, I do these paintings that are water-based and then I do these other paintings which are acrylic and oil-based. Um, they, they still communicate with each other, there is a, they have a conversation between the two. My aim for people who are looking at my paintings, I just want to explode their visual senses. I want them to experience the Scottish landscape in, in the state of wildness and hidden depths that it actually has, so that when they look at it, they, they feel all of those elements. And also knowing that those paintings, especially the ones that started outside, are from, from that place. Um, and if it's the acrylics and the oils, then it is that um, intuitive response there that they, they can see. Scotland is a stunning place and it has beautiful mountains which are absolutely iconic. But there are the spaces and places in between. And I think they are very worthy of our attention.